Hey guys, Pastor Phil Yates from the Greater Sydney Conference. I hope you're well, enjoying this time of isolation, enjoying this time of community, just building a relationship with your family, whether your dad, your mum, your brother, your sister, whoever it may be, cook breakfast, lunch and dinner for them, do it camp style, do whatever you need to do, make them happy. Look, today we're going to spend about 10 minutes, we're going to do an honour, so stick with me. It's the best looking honour out there, look at that thing, yep, it's called the Reef Honour, so let's go. What is a reef? A reef can be categorized as two things. One, an oyster reef or a coral reef. Oysters packed on top of each other makes an oyster reef. A coral reef with different coral and corals made out of um, calcium carbonate, hard white material. That's uh, kind of kind of does all the thing. We'll find out how the coral reef gets its color later on in the little in the in the little presentation. Here we go. What is a coral? Is it an animal or a plant? Can't fool you guys. Of course, it's an animal, you know. So it's uh, it's an animal, and uh, cor coral is categorized as. Let me play a little thing for you. Nidaria. Excuse me. Nidaria. What'd you call me? Nidaria. <laughs> Nidaria is uh, is two different types of things. One soft, and one can swim around like a jellyfish. Nidaria, or one can be coral, and it's um, it's actually a living thing can only be found on the top layer, and that's the living part, top layer, because it needs the sunlight to live. The difference between hard coral and soft coral, hard coral is a soft-bodied animal secreting hard calcium. Remember we talked about the calcium carbonate? That's what it secretes around them, making uh, having multiples of eight tentacles, and uh, those tentacles are used for feeding. Soft coral, the soft body animals secreting little calcium, sway back and forth in the current. You've seen that. If you haven't, look on YouTube, see what you can find about this uh, soft coral swaying back and forth in the current. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. So where are corals found? Well, there's an equator right in the middle, and 30 degrees north and south of that equator are uh, nice, warm, shallow salt water, and and that's what they that's what corals coral reefs are found in. Um, that warm, shallow, salty water. Types of coral reefs is a fringing. Fringing reef, which grows near the shore of continents and islands, usually separated by a shallow body of water, you know, the lagoons. So you've got a big sand dune, comes down, nice lagoon, and then you've got the reef uh, right on the edge. Then you've got a barrier reef. And barrier reefs are what we've got in Australia. It's called the Great Barrier Reef. Similarly to fringing uh, reef, but further out from the shore, usually grow on the edge of the continental shelf. So uh, they grow near the surface. And when uh, boats, the reason why they're called barrier reefs, when the boats used to come in, is to hit these coral reefs and, and just wreck their ships and sink, you know. And there's a, there's a few different uh, ships up, up, uh, up in Queensland, the, up the north coast there, that have actually hit these reefs. And because, because it creates a barrier between the sea and the mainland, they call it a barrier reef. I don't know if you knew that, but hey, I didn't. Atolls, a fringe reef that grows around a small island. And if the island erodes away or, or, uh, or sinks, it leaves a ring reef around a lagoon. Look really cool. Look up ring reef on YouTube. You'll, you'll, you'll love the look of that. Patch reef, an isolated patch reef that grows uh, from the floor of a lagoon or the barrier reef. Rarely hits the surface, but it's called a patch reef. Now, the next question is asked to design, asked to define um, this word. Let me just uh, play this for you. Zuazanthella. Didn't know that was English word. Zuazanthella. Are they speaking another language? Zuazanthella. Zuazanthella. Let me see. Zuazanthella. Zuazanthella. Can you say that? I. <laughs> Mate, my tongue twists with that word. Zooxanthella are microscopic algae that live inside the parts of the soft coral. Now get this. This gives the coral its color. Zooxanthella. Who thought? This zooxanthella feeds on the feeds or feeds the coral by creating a sugar by the energy of the sun. How's that? We'll learn more about how Coral feeds uh, a, a little bit later on, but we're, we're, look, we're hitting four minutes, four minutes and 48 seconds, so we're going to keep going. Uh, what types of food, how do they feed themselves and what, what happens at night? The use of uh, this one, I'm 
playing these because do you know what? These are like the hardest words on the planet to to kind of pronounce. Here we go. Ready? Listen to this. Nematocyst. 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 I hope you guys can hear that. Nematocyst. Nematocysts are microscopic harpoons loaded with venom, and they shoot those harpoons out and stun the prey, and then they eat that prey. Uh, what kind of fe that feeding happens at night, right? What kind of feeding happens during the day? Zooxanthella. Zooxanthella feeds the coral by the sugar that makes from that it makes from the ed energy of the sun. Why? I bet you're wondering why coral reefs are such so clear, you know, such clear water and all that kind of stuff. Because all the food and all the particles are filtered through this coral, making it clean. Identify five corals. Well, there's five different corals. Here we go. Skeleton coral, pillar coral, brain coral, yellow coral, octo coral, and paragorgia. Don't know if I printed that last one right, but you can look it up. Uh, they're, they're five coral. Ten, identify ten fish that are found on the coral reef. Are you ready? Sharks, of course. Sharks are found there. Uh, surgeon fish. Uh, trigger fish. Uh, trout. Trout are found on coral reefs. Uh, what else have we got? We've got angel fish. Butterfly fish. Cardinal fish. We've got the clown fish. Remember Finding Nemo? Great movie. Clownfish, damselfish, uh, gropers and cods, and a parrotfish. Uh, that's probably about 12 sharks. But <laughs> 12 sharks. That's about probably about 12 fish. So you'd be good. You just need to know 10 of them. Identify five species of non-coral invertebrates that found and live on a, on, a, on a reef. Well, we've got the crown of thorns. We've got the starfish. We've got the sea cucumber. We've got the giant clam. We've got the dry, giant uh, trin, Trinton and the nudibranch. We'll find out about the nudibranch and what happens there a bit later. So uh, lately, up in the Great Barrier Reef, we've we've noticed a little bit of... Sorry, there's something on my computer. I just blew it off. Look, we're at 7 minutes and 35 seconds. We're in good shape. We're nearly there. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, up on the Great Barrier Reef, there's just such a thing as going, such thing going on as bleaching. Now, how does bleaching happen, and what happens there? When the conditions change, so the temperature or the pH levels, or the um, you know the coral dumps out their colourful zooxantha. Zooxantha. Oh man, I can't even pronounce. Let's go back to old mate and see if we can pronounce this again. Are you ready? Zooxanthella. Zooxanthella. There we go. So zooxanthella, it dumps it out and it become the, the coral becomes white because what does zooxanthella do? Gives the coral its color. So that's awesome. Well, it's not awesome that it's bleaching. So it's the temperature or the pH level of the of the of the water kind of changes and it dumps out the zooxanthella and uh, the, hence bleaching because um, the coral goes back to its um, Calcium carbonate. Sorry, I had to think a bit, getting a bit old. Eight minutes and 39 seconds. Let's keep going. Identify at least one evasive species and how and how it can affect the reefs. Nudibranches. Remember we talked about nudibranches? These are nudibranches. Nudibranches eat the coral. In Hawaii, they've experienced huge invasion of these nudibranches. Many were once pets in the tropical aquariums. So what they did, don't like them anymore, chuck them in the sea, that's where they belong? No. They've uh, actually taken over the, the, the whole thing, and what they're doing is eating the corals up, and it's not good for the coral reef. So that's one uh, in, invasive species and how it's affected the reefs. Number 12, why are reefs so important in the community and three ways of protecting it? Young fish hide from, from uh, some of the enemies and large fish uh, in the in the coral, and they hide amongst the coral. The coral reefs protect the inner shoreline from erosion or, and large waves hitting it. Now, three ways of protecting it. Don't pollute, um, don't collect live coral, and don't touch live coral. Look, we've got 10 seconds left. And in these 10 seconds, we're going to talk about what you need to do. 
is you need to do. Prepare an object lesson about an animal that lives in the reef. Object lesson being a uh, like like a lesson that you're going to teach. Do it from the Bible. So how does a, an animal on the coral reef actually depict a good les lesson about what we what what good lessons are taught in the Bible? So pick an animal and parallel it to a good lesson that we can learn in the Bible. Prepare that. Uh, watch watch a presentation about reefs. You know, watch a presentation about the Great Barrier Reef or any other reef in the world and uh, summarize what you've learned about the coral reefs. Make, sh make a short video about the reefs and a conservation project that could happen. So three simple things you can do immediately. Look, guys, I hope you had fun doing this, Honor. We've gone about 40, 50 seconds over, but that's fine. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy the isolation. Look after your family and uh, do the honour.